Hello? A member from the uh, Facebook group, Academic Forum with Dr. Nabi Jabber, Navia, I believe the name was, hopefully I pronounced it right, asked this question, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer it through this video. Can you please tell me how to find the transient response of networks containing inductor and capacitors? Now, before we proceed, uh, let's just let's just quickly define what the transient response would mean. Basically, uh, uh, when you have a capacitor or resist or inductor, we know that they're storage elements. So basically, we need uh, they're, they're basically energy storage elements. And uh, usually, the energy can be absorbed or dissipated, let's say by a resistor, for example. Now, the, the, the way that this energy is dissipated uh, by the resistor is what we call the transverse response. So, we start by uh, giving an example here to explain this, to try to answer this question. Uh, we get A regular circuit we can start with the RC circuit so you have the resistor you have the capacitor and then we can use an example here with a, we can say 200 ohms one milli farad for the capacitor. So the idea here is to basically uh, try to solve this transit response. Now I can start solving this problem right away and then I'll explain something called the time constant that actually tells us the, uh, the speed how long it takes for the capacitor to discharge from uh, to 37 percent of the initial value it was in voltage so basically right now what we have is uh, we have change the color here we initially let's say here is a 10 volts Uh, energy source you can say and uh, we have to assume uh, like initially at when, when we say time at time equals zero minus we have steady state which basically means that this capacitor here is open so the capacitor is open And of course, in order for the KVL to apply, we uh, this capacitor here will be 10 volts at that time. So this voltage here will be 10 volts, and that is obviously because uh, there is no current in the circuit at t equals when you have this open circuit here open capacitor what you'll have here is that no there's no current going through this resistor hence the voltage across this resistor is zero at t equals zero minus but we know the cap the, the voltage and capacitor value is a bit different now now that we know this we we, we uh we have to basically get rid of the voltage here because we already know that the transient response really is uh, is how the circuit responses to that energy stored in the capacitor so we're, we're focusing on the resistor and the capacitor so we we, we need to basically get rid of this uh, voltage source the pulse source and and we're, we're, we're left with the resist the simple resistor and a capacitor circuit with obviously with the capacitor having that 10 volts at t equals zero plus. Now that we know this, we apply KCL to this RC circuit. So 
that's the whole idea. So KCL. Now this is very easy. The KCL obviously you need to know the current through the resistor and the current going through the capacitor. And the current through the resistor is obviously V. I can change the colors here. To hopefully this is okay. V equals R. We all know this. And the capacitor and the current going through that capacitor, we know it's the C. And the rate of change over time for that voltage across that capacitor and equals to zero. So we know this from uh, regular circuits. <coughs> now we need to solve this because we obviously need to get we need to get the voltage here uh, with respect to time. So basically we have we have to solve this and what we do here is basically uh, for the V over RC, we get we get rid of this C, we put it here, and we have plus dV over dt. Doing a step by step here, and this obviously will create will give us, um, and we have to, we put the V with the V here, so we get with one over RC plus dV, right? And now what we get here equals zero. Now we obviously need to integrate to get rid of this uh, rate of change over time. So we get we get um, uh, ln of v, obviously because one over v. We need to, when you integrate, uh, basically this we got this through using dv over v. Basically one over v. 1 over v here gives you ln v, uh, which is basically the natural logarithm of v, and equal, now this goes to the other side, we can say uh, minus t over rc, and minus t over rc because here what we did is, is integrate minus 1 over rc, and with respect to time, and this obviously will give you the t here, over rc, plus the constant. We can call it C usually. Uh, we can call it so we don't confuse it with capacitor. So we can just say uh, X. So now that we have that constant here, we basically know that the natural logarithm of V at time t equals zero. Of course, this will be zero when at time t equals zero, you're left with the constant. So basically, at time t equals zero, uh, when the voltage, a uh, natural logarithm of that gives you that constant x. Now that we know this, we can use that. Now we can use instead of x here, we can put that ln of v when t equals zero. So we end up with the following ln of v minus natural logarithm of v when t equals 0 equals your minus t over rc which is here. Now that we have this we can actually start solving for our, uh, voltage or, uh, with respect to time. Now we know this simple math when you have minus you have a division so natural logarithm of v over v when t equals zero equals minus t over rc and we solve this further we need to get rid of the natural logarithm and it's easy you do you do e to the power of that you get rid of it simple math v over v you can say t zero here equals e to the power, because we have to do both both sides for equality to be to still be valid. So e to the power minus t over r c. Now that we have this, we can easily solve for the voltage with respect to time equals v at uh, time equals zero e to the power minus t over rc. 
So this is our voltage solved here that we're looking for. Now, now what what's the RC? That's a good. That's a very good question here. Uh, the RC that you see in that equation. Basically, the speed at which the capacitor discharges. Really, by you can say um, thirty-seven percent of its initial value, we call that the time constant, which is really RC. So basically, you get here a situation like so. Here, this RC you can change color. So basically, this RC is really tau, which is the time constant. We call it time constant. And it's the time uh, it takes for the capacitor to discharge from 10 volts in this case. Because RC, what's RC here? RC is equal to 200 ohms is the example. Multiply by the 1 millifarad. Farad, and then we get 0.2 seconds. Now... So basically for that 10 volts, so it takes basically 0.2 seconds for the, uh, the capacitor to discharge from 10 volts to 3.7 volts because 3.7 volts is 37% of 10 volts that was initial. All right, so basically it takes 0.2 seconds for that capacitor to discharge from 10 volts to 3.7 volts using that time constant. And this is our equation for the voltage that with respect to time. So, so this is actually finding the transient response that we're looking for now of the RC circuit. Now what will happen if, for example, here I use the 100... Uh, 100 ohms instead of 200 of course your in that case your RC will become 0.1 second instead of 0.2 so what does that tell us it just tells us uh, the capacitor discharges faster when that resistor was doubled was uh, sorry was uh, half so basically as you increase the resistance here in an RC circuit, in this simple RC circuit, for example, you as you increase the resistance, the capacitor will, will charge slower, will discharge slower. So that's one one way of looking at it. Now, now that we solve the RC circuit, uh, the same thing we do for the uh, RL circuit, which we call it. I'm not going to solve it here because there's a lot of similarities. It's the same procedure, but the only difference is like in this case, we solved the KCL, as you can see it in the RC circuit. We solved the KCL RC circuit, and we had the capacitor being open initially, and we we start with this voltage. Now with a now with a, with an RL circuit, what will happen is you end up with a resistance and conductance and this power source here. Now this one is usually shorted initially and you solve and you get the current and then instead of solving the KCL RC circuit you solve the KVL RL circuit and you can do this as a homework it's very easy it's, you saw just solve a KVL basically instead of a KCL and what will happen here is uh, you will see that it's very similar uh, even the answer is very similar uh, for both except here for the RL circuit, what will happen is you end up with the current. You solve for the current here with respect to time, and you get the current when time is zero, e to the power e minus r with respect to over L. So basically, so basically you get that. This should be an e here. So basically you get you get this instead of uh, the the voltage that we saw for the RC circuit here with and the time constant here remember was RC so you see the striking similarities here the time constant here will be 
L over R, right? Because it's just like how here was flip. So it's L over R. For this case, you end up with a time constant. So you can see that it's very similar to um, the RC circuit, the RL circuit. It can be solved similarly. And obviously, you get your tau, which is in this case, like I said, L over R. And that time constant will tell you, same thing, how long uh, it takes for the inductor to go from 10 volts down to a 3.7 volts in this example. And 37%, same thing. And thank you very much. And, and uh, thanks for the question. Until next time.